Hi, Nick Thomas here at the Academy of Historical Fencing. Welcome back to another review video. I'm sorry there hasn't been much in the way of sort of articles and reviews lately. Basically, I got some kind of cold flu type thing over Christmas and haven't really been able to speak an awful lot. So I am kind of just about back there now and, and as you can see, just about back to sparring as well. So I wanted to crack off with um, a review of the Black Fencer Side Sword. <clears throat> so um, this is version four, so this is the current one. In fact, this one arrived just a few days ago, but I've been using them quite a lot. Um, this is actually one of my members ones I'm going to be delivering tonight. Uh, so, um, I'll give you some spec first of all. The sword weighs one kilo, which is 2.2 pounds. Um, they can vary a few grams either way. This one's about 18 grams over, but um, they, they're pretty much always around about one kilo. <clears throat> the um, blade length is 95 centimeters, which is uh, 37 and a half inch. The balance point is um, nine centimeters. So, specification wise, um, they represent a great many of this type of sword. Now, what kind of sword is this? <clears throat> it's kind of a generic Renaissance sword. Um, when I say that, I mean, in Britain, for example, this would have been called a rapier. Um, and in well, some other regions as well. And of course, the rapier evolved into other things um, from there as well. But <clears throat> basically what it is, is as the arming sword, um, transitioned into more complex guards and also in civilian where its blades tended to get a bit longer, um, a bit more pointy as well in terms of acute tapering and develop more hand, hand protection. So <clears throat> this is a, basically a, a generic sort of 16th century um, sword that was used for civilian wear and in military use as well, um, both as a sidearm and in some cases a, a primary weapon. Um, so that's what it's based on. Um, uh, this kind of type of hilt, if you like, um, is very, very common in the 16th century. You see these rings develop in, in sort of roughly the early 15th century. <clears throat> By the end of the 15th century, they're reasonably common, and you go into the 16th, and they're very common indeed. Um, and this sort of side sword is, you can see it's quite flat. So you've got the rings and the protection there, you've got an apple bow, but you don't have any additional side protection protecting the actual inside and outside of the hand. Um, and although more complex hilts did develop um, as you go through the 16th century, particularly by the time you get to about the mid 16th century, um, hilts like this did um, survive on into the early 17th century um, and further in, in some cases as well. So basically what you're looking at is a good representation of a <clears throat> very common sword of the Renaissance. Um, and you could do some rapier treaty sort of stuff with it. Um, you could um, do a lot of the, the sort of uh, Bolognese Dardi type stuff like uh, Marozzo and um, Delagash and stuff like that. It's a general, generically really useful sword. You can put it with bucklers and daggers and shields um, and even a pair of them. A pair of side swords, a pair of rapier, a case of rapiers. Uh, okay, on to the review. Well, <clears throat> I've never reviewed the side sword before, even though I've owned one myself and used them quite a bit. In terms of handling characteristics, it's very difficult to say what an original side sword, if you like, handled like, because it's a very, very broad category. It's like saying, you know, what does a long sword look like in terms of length and weight and things like that. So it's typical, if you like. There are loads of historical examples that are this proportion, this weight, and roughly this handling. So <clears throat> it's a good average representation of a 16th century side sword. So in, the, in that regard, they've got it about right. It does, um, move, handle, operate really quite realistically. Um, durability. Well, since um, the early Sabre Guard that we had one issue with, um, when I say one, there was an issue with a few of the swords, we've never broken anything else from Black Fencer. Um, they fixed that problem very, very quickly, and we've never broken anything of any kind ever since. So durability-wise, they're absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> These latest models, they're a bit shinier, and that's because they've added something. I'm not really an expert on it, I have to ask them. They've added something to um, uh, discourage them from rusting, which is nice. So they should stay a bit shinier for a bit longer. Um, that's neither here nor there, but it's, it's a nice addition. It's a nice improvement. Um, and going on to the, um, the hilt, it's quite large. There's quite a bit of space. You're going to be able to use quite a lot of different gloves, like Red Dragons and Conan gloves and stuff like that. There's a lot of space to get a good glove in there, which is nice. And you can hold it on more a hammer or a thumb on the back if you wanted to use it for, say, Myers Rapier, which this kind of sword is quite well suited to Myers Rapier. It's roughly representative of what he was using. Um, in terms of flexibility, they flex nicely, but you have to treat the flexibility like a steel. It flexes roughly like the standard blades that Regeni, uh, Regeni sells, not his... Um, uh, strong blades, but his standard ones. So 
nice bit of flex, but um, don't go crazy with them. Don't thrust it like you would with, say, a steel rapier, because you're not going to get that much flex on it. Um, and in that regard, as I said, it's like a steel side sword. Um, but obviously, yes, it does hit lighter, nice thick edges, um, nice thick tip. What more can I say about it? Um, not a huge amount, to be honest. I mean, over the years, there haven't been that many side sword options, and a lot of them um, cost an awful lot of money. So it's a very good price. And in terms of durability, we found that black fencer swords tend to last um, a hell of a lot longer than equivalent steels. So you're talking about incredibly good value for money because it's not just the initial save and it's durability afterwards. Because, um, yeah, we've never managed to break a blade at all. And since that one saber hilt fix, we've not managed to break a saber either. Um, what more could I say about it? There's not a huge amount to say. Um, notice with these V4s, they've changed it so that the quillen no longer goes through the plastic. Um, now it's kind of more like a traditional saw construction, is that the guard slides up the blade. Um, it's comfortable, as comfortable as a side sword ever is, because you have to wrap the quillen. So it feels like a lot of steel um, side swords. Uh, I really, really like these. I've used them a lot of them in the club, and um, people are also using them for some, even though I teach sort of Capoferro, and um, we also do Mize Rape and stuff like that, is people can use this as a, a learner for Capoferro, even though it's not quite the right sword, but it's perfectly usable for, for drilling structure and stuff like that. And it's well suited to Mize Rapier, which is so nice. And just generally a, a good, useful Renaissance type sword. Uh, so yes, I really highly recommend them, particularly for a sword type, which is not made by manuf many manufacturers and is, to be honest, most of the steels out there do suffer from some issues in terms of guards breaking or being very expensive or availability um, sort of uh, issues. So <clears throat> readily available, very reliable, handles well. To be honest, it's, I think, an excellent job Black Fence has done there. So um, highly recommend them. Um, if I've missed anything, then feel free to post or ask any questions. I'm sure I've missed something. Um, no, I think that's pretty all I've got to say about it for now. So, an excellent training sword, and uh, I'm sure to use it more on some sparring videos quite soon. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Any questions, please put them in the comments section, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thanks for watching.